Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example has a different set of denominators, 4, 6, and 7. They're very small. It wouldn't appear that it would be that hard to find the lowest common denominator. But let's again check our two different methods. The first method is that we'll take our larger of the denominators and find multiples of that, 14, 21, 28, 35, and so forth, to see if the other two denominators fit evenly into the multiple of the largest one. So starting with uh, twice 14, because obviously 4 and 6 do not fit into 7, so we'll start with 2 times 7. 2 times 7, which is 14. And the question is, does 4 fit evenly into 14? The answer is no. So that doesn't work. Uh, 3 times 7, which is 21, that's an odd number. So obviously 4 and 6, which are even numbers, will not fit evenly into that odd number. So we'll say no. 4 times 7, which is 28. Now, 4 does fit into 28 evenly. And how about 6? Does 6 fit into 28 evenly? And the answer is no, it doesn't. All right, next would be 5 times 7, which is 35, which is odd, so therefore it's no again. How about 6 times 7? That would be 42. And 4 would be no, because 4 does not fit evenly into 42. 7 times 7 is 49. That's an odd number, so the answer is no. And 8 times 7, which is equal to 56. And the number 4 does fit evenly into 56, but the number 6 does not fit evenly into 56. And so you can see that this method becomes a very laborious method, and you just keep going and going, and who knows what the final answer is. So maybe we should try the next method. So here you can see that one method probably is much preferable over the other one. So the second method is where we take each of the denominators and write it as a product of its factors. So 4 is 2 times 2, so the factor 2 appears twice. 6 is equal to 2 times 3, so the factor 2 appears once and the factor 3 appears once. And 7, well that's simply 1 times 7, so 7 appears once, we don't need to worry about 1. All right, so the lowest common denominator is now going to be a product of 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. We circle every factor where it appears the most, and so then we can say that the LCD, the lowest common denominator, is equal to 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. 3 times 7 is 21, times 4 is equal to 84. See how much easier that method was versus this method. Again, this is a fail-safe method. That's what I was trying to say, fail-safe method. Works every time. In this case, it was a lot easier. So now we go over here and we realize our denominators are going to be 84. That's the common denominator. And we ask ourselves the question, what do I have to do to 4 to make it into 84? I have to multiply times 21, which means I have to multiply the numerator times 21 as well. 6 goes into 84, it looks like, um, well, that's 14. 6 times 14 is 84, so I have to multiply the numerator by 84. And 7 goes into 84 12 times, so I have to multiply 7 by 12, which means I have to multiply the numerator by 12 as well. So that's how we find what the new corresponding numerators will be. Here it will be 21. 5 times, four, uh, 5 times 14 is 70, and 3 times 12 is 36. So now the fraction will become the following. So this is equal to 21 plus 70 minus 36, all divided by the common denominator of 84. 70 minus 36 is 34 because 34 plus 36 is 70. So 34 plus 21, that gives us uh, 55 over 84. Again, 34, 35, 55. And let's see here, 55 is 5 times 11. 84 hmm, doesn't look like it has the factors 5 or 11 in it, so we can no longer reduce it. That means that this would be our final reduced answer. So again, we have two methods, but it became clear that this would be very laborious, and it would take us a while before we finally would find the lowest common denominator, which is 84. And so therefore, using this method appeared to be a whole lot faster. And that's how it's done.